Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. So yes, we know past few presentation, we covered the chapter of respiratory emergencies. From this presentation onwards, we are going to start a new chapter that is the next chapter, cardiovascular emergency. So in this first part, we'll see the cardiovascular assessment. So as we know, this is the standard format and management format, assessment and management format of emergency medicine. Seen says uh, primary survey, history taking, secondary assessment and reassessment. So the same thing only what we discussed in respiratory emergency. So seen says it includes these are the things. So I don't want to grind the same things again and again. Primary survey, uh, again we know, we have to know the general impression of the person, mental status of the person, uh, airway breathing, circulation, disability and exposure. This is for the medical condition. If you are uh, assessing or if you are managing the trauma cases means then airway, cervical spine protection will add and then breathing and ventilation, circulation, hemorrhagic control will add. So these are the some additional things. but. Uh, so this is the standard format A, B, C, D, E. But if uh, in two major conditions, the format will change. Two major conditions, the format will change. The format will change like a cap D, C, A, B, D, E. So this is the standard format A, B, C, D, E. You have to check simultaneously, you have to assess the airway, breathing, circulation, disability exposure. But in two major conditions, the uh, format will change which are the condition means if you are found finding one person in an unresponsive state so you're going and analyzing so you are assessing the person there you are finding one person in an unresponsive state suspected with an cardiac arrest means in that case that form will uh, that format will change so you have to start with a circulation first you have to assess the pulse and then you have to go with an uh, airway breathing disability exposure in the second case, in the case of uh, external, visible external hemorrhage, visible external hemorrhage. In the uh, bleeding cases, visible external bleeding cases also, that format will change like a CABDE. So in that bleeding cases, first you have to assess and then you have to control, you have to address the bleeding, you have to control the bleeding, then only you have to go with an airway breathing disability and exposure. This is the one of the important thing. So history taking also same thing, you have to collect a sample history signs and symptom, allergy, medication, past medical history, last oral intake, even leads to illness. If it is a trauma case, it means even leads to the injury. So, uh, we will see one by one, what are the common signs and symptoms that will occur in the, otherwise that we will encounter in the cardiovascular system means, most commonly the person will complain the chest discomfort, otherwise chest pain and then dyspnea will have palpitation. So, these are the some common uh, signs and symptoms, otherwise subjective objective data will encounter in the case of cardiovascular emergencies. So medication also we should know what are the common medication the person who is having a cardiac disease they will take. So we will see one by one in symptom, sign and symptom wise the first symptom we, sign we took sorry symptom we took as a chest pain. So we know chest pain or chest discomfort is a uh, subjective data. So the person will tell the complaint so that is the subjective data. So here the person uh, only they will tell I have a chest discomfort. Still, we should know the, if you want a effective management, you should know the further um, things regarding the pain. Means you have to furtherly, you have to dig more about the chest pain. You have to ask the when it started, otherwise how the pain is, uh, how the pain nature, uh, either it is radiating or not. Those are the some extra points you have to ask. So for that, we have one mnemonic OPQRST. So O in the sense onset of pain, P in the sense provoke provoking or palliative, provoking and palliative, Q in the sense quality of pain, R in the sense radiation and referred pain, S in the sense severity, T in the sense time. So we will see one by one, first one is a O, that is a onset or origin of pain, origin of pain, either it started suddenly or gradually. So it pre, either they may have a previous episodes like previous past history that same thing happened or not the pain already they were experienced or not in past. If yes means what was the diagnosis any treatment taken or not. So these are the regarding uh, these things regarding the onset of pain or origin of pain. Second is a provoking and palliative factors. Provoking in the sense uh, which aggravate the pain, so which increase the pain, palliative in the sense which give the comfort. 
so i can tell one example so some person they will tell like this if i uh, climb uh, steps so if i climb five steps i will have a uh, chest pain otherwise i will get a more dyspnea difficulty in breathing otherwise some people they will tell if i climb a slope uh, slope in the sense there i will get a, um, a dyspnea otherwise chest pain so these are the some common complaints so in that here the climbing the steps otherwise climbing the hill or climbing the slope that is the aggravating factor so that will increase the pain so palliative in the sense in the same cases if i took uh, the person who is complaining the climbing that uh, stairs otherwise climbing the uh, slope so one after and dyspnea if i take a 5 minutes rest i will settle down otherwise i will feel better some rather cases they will tell if they have uh, already they are taking uh, nitroglycerin means on the time of chest pain if i took a sublingual nitroglycerin i will feel better so those are the so taking nitroglycerin otherwise taking rest that is the palliative factors so provoking means which aggravating the chest pain palliative means which gives the uh, feels com uh, comfort or better q in the sense quality of pain so what is the quality either it's a pain is a dull pain sharp pain crushing pain or heavy or squeezing pain so how they are feeling like or in the sense radiation and the referred pain radiation in the sense so uh, take example of myocardial infarction those so are the pain origin in the so the pathology in the left side of the chest otherwise in the middle chest so from that it will radiate into the left shoulder left jaw and then uh, left arm forearm tip of the ulna region so here what is the concept means so in the case of uh, myocardial infarction the vagus nerve, nerve get injured otherwise the issued nerve is a vagus nerve so wherever the vagus nerve is supplying it will it will transmit the pain impulse otherwise it will um, take over the pain impulse all over where it supplying so that is the radiation of pain and then here also here we uh, given like a um, aortic aneurysm otherwise uh, ruptured aortic aneurysm so these are the cases the person will have a pain in the middle of the chest center chest mean the same things they will also have the pain in the uh, interscapular region between the two scapula interscapular region also they will complain in the case of referred pain so the pathology will be in one region but the pain in in the uh, some other location so for example in the case of um, peptic ulcer disease otherwise in the case of pancreatitis the person will have a pathology in the abdominal but the person will complain in the back side so in the lumbar region they will complain in the case of again the second example is cholecystitis in the case they will complain the tip of the shoulder those those are the referred pain radius in the sense from the pathology site it will radiate the pain referred in the sense pathology in one side but the pain in in the some other location so severity wise so you can give the 1 to 10 score from that they can uh, give the scoring based on their pain intensity timing in the sense so you have to ask when the pain start when the pain start how long so the total uh, duration of pain at what time it get worse or better so when it start the total duration duration when it uh, at what time it gets better otherwise at what time it gets the get a peak level or it gets worse was it continuous or intermittent pain so these are the some uh, eliciting factor in the chest pain so these are the thing you have to elicit while the time uh, taking of history so second symptom is a dyspnea dyspnea again it is a symptom it is not a sign so these are the subjective data the person only will tell me i have a suffocation in the breathing otherwise i have a difficulty in breathing so dyspnea it may uh, that may vary in intensity from the simply being aware of one's breathing to the severe respiratory distress what it uh, denotes means so um, so we are the normal human being we are not aware about our breathing so we are not aware about our breathing it is the involuntary function so our autonomic nervous system taking part so in some rather time uh, we can alter our uh, rate and depth so that is uh, uh, not fully some rather time we will alter our um, rate and depth but maximum our autonomic system uh, taking over so it's a involuntary movement involuntary function 
but in the case of dyspnea that is the main uh, minimum range from the minimum the person first they will feel the suffocation suffocation in the sense they will simply uh, being aware of aware of about their breathing second thing it will end to the in a, a severe status the person will feel the respiratory distress so we know the respiratory distress signs so the position of the person they will have a tripoid position and then they will have a nasal flaring they will have and then pursed lips they will have mainly they will use the accessory muscles so these are the uh, respiratory distress signs so what will cause the dyspnea so causes for the dyspnea pulmonary embolism pneumothorax acute pulmonary edema pneumonitis any upper airway otherwise lower airway obstruction that will cause the dyspnea so third uh, these are the various forms for the dyspnea so orthopnea platypnea paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea trypnea orthopnea in the sense so the person will develop dyspnea in the uh, state of supine or horizontal position so in lying down position the person will get the dyspnea otherwise difficulty in breathing or because of the heart failure otherwise left ventricular failure cases so if you propped up the position the person feels better so this is the condition orthopnea so just the opposite to that so this is called the platypnea platypnea in the sense just opposite uh, vice versa of the orthopnea so once the person in the supine position they will feel better if you place the person in the propped up otherwise sitting position they will develop the dyspnea so just opposite to the orthopnea and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea in the sense paroxysmal in the sense suddenly developed suddenly developed nocturnal in the sense at the time of night dyspnea difficult in breathing so if you collectively uh, if you combine those other things so the dyspnea suddenly it will develop at the night time so the person uh, they will sleep so once after one or two or slowly progressively the lung get uh, in pulmonary edema cases so slowly the lung uh, fills with an fluid once after one or two hours the person suddenly wake up from the sleep and then they will complain the dyspnea that is the paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea tryponia means that is the once the person in the left recumbent or right recumbent position otherwise left lateral right right lateral position they will develop the uh, tryponia and then third condition is a syncope syncope in the sense otherwise known as a, in general term we will call as a fainting so it is a sudden temporary loss of consciousness sudden temporary loss of consciousness otherwise you can remember as a transient loss of consciousness so here the person will lose their consciousness it's about less than 10 seconds otherwise less than 5 seconds so what is the reason for the syncope what is the reason for the syncope means so here the reason is an interruption of blood supply to the brain interruption of blood supply to the brain so i'll explain this condition so our brain is a so we know it is a major vital organ but it brain doesn't have any storage box means if you are providing continuous fuel means the brain will run if you cut off the fuel means the brain won't run that is the thing so you can think our uh, electricity so light or fan so if you are switching on means if you are providing electricity the fan will run if you are turning off the light means the electricity cut off so fan won't run the same concept only if you are providing continuous fuel fuel in the sense blood and oxygen if you are providing fuel means the brain will run if you are cutting off, cut off the fluid means the brain won't run that is why brain won't have any storage box so for that reason only syncope is developing so it will cause the transient loss of consciousness once if the blood flow retain means the consciousness will retain that is the concept so two major uh, conditions we are describing causes first one is a cardiac and non-cardiac cardiac in the sense pump related non cardiac in the sense non uh, it is non pump related okay so cardiac pump related what are the causes bradycardia so decreased um, heart rate that is the 
less than 50 beats per minute based on the American Heart Association. So, sick sinus syndrome in the sense that is a sinus node dysfunction, sinus node dysfunction. So, here that uh, if you analyze the rhythm means you will get a tachycardia and then bradycardia then in the A system. So, that manner will follow in the ECG rhythm. So, supraventricular tachycardia we know, ventricular fibrillation we know, Stokes Adams syndrome it is most important. In Stokes Adams syndrome the person even in a supine position the person will develop the syncope. So, Stokes Adams syndrome mainly because of the arrhythmia it will happen. So, because of the arrhythmia the most important thing the even in a supine position the person will develop the syncope. Second, uh, next one is a myocardial infarction, ball wall thrombus also most important. So, here thrombus in the sense blood clot, ball wall in the sense, so thrombus blood clot. So, it is a floating blood clot, it is like a ball, a round in shape, other whichever, whichever in shape, so that will floated in inside the cavity, otherwise either that uh, thrombus may present in the left ventricle, otherwise in the iota. So, while the person leaning forward, while leaning forward, that floating ball will obstruct the outflow, okay. So, if it is a left ventricle means, if it is a floating ball while leaning forward, it will obstruct the outflow. So, it will obstruct the iota, thereby it will reduce the blood flow to the brain. So, that is the ball wall thrombus, cardiac medication like beta blockers, alpha blockers, nitrates, digitalis, diuretics. So, beta blockers, alpha blockers, nitrates, those are the vasodilators, nitrates, beta blockers is a rate control drug. So, thereby it will reduce the BP and then thereby it will reduce the blood supply to the brain. Diuretics, it will reduce the volume, thereby it reducing the content and then reduce the blood supply to the brain. Dehydration, hypoglycemia, these are the non-cardiac causes. Dehydration, hypoglycemia, vasovagal response. So, we know vagus is a parasympathetic nervous system. If it is get stimulated means that will cause the vasodilation and then that will reduce the heart rate. So, those are the things also contributing factor in the syncope. Orthostatic hypotension this is most important. So, again segregate the term. Hypotension in the sense low blood pressure, low blood pressure. Orthostatic in the sense postural otherwise. So, uh, uh, orthostatic hypotension means the person will develop the hypotension otherwise low blood pressure when from the changing the position otherwise from the sitting or uh, lying down position to the standing position on the time the person will develop the hypotension. So, how we can measure means for orthostatic hypotension first you have to take the blood pressure while in the supine resting position. So, you have to make the person in supine position there you have to take the blood pressure okay manual BP with the spigmo manometer. So, once after that you have to ask the person to stand for the 3 minutes. So, time interval is most important you have to ask the person to stand the 3 minutes then after 3 minutes you have to take the blood pressure. Okay. Here additional factor we have to concentrate on the blood pressure and mean the same time pulse also. So, you have to take blood pressure and pulse. Okay. So, when we are calling as orthostatic hypotension means if the blood pressure variation is more than 20 mm Hg and then um, uh, blood pressure and then pulse variation is more than 20 mm Hg means that is the orthostatic hypotension. So, here more than 20 mm Hg means blood pressure, systolic blood pressure fall in 20 mm Hg. So, first if you measure the uh, uh, like 120 80 mm Hg in the supine position. So, while the time, uh, while the time of standing, if you are measuring like a 100 bar um, 80 mm Hg. So, here the difference is 20 mm Hg. So, the fall in blood pressure more than 20 mm Hg means that is the orthostatic hypotension. Here we told pulse also most important. The pulse will increase 20 beats per minute, uh, the rate will increase 20 beats per minute because BP is falling. So, to overcome that the heart rate will increase, the pulse rate will increase. So, BP if you measure, you can remember as a T20 rule. 
T20. It is not a rule, we are making as a rule. T20 means 20, the systolic blood pressure will drop more than 20 mm Hg to compensate that the pulse rate, otherwise the heart rate will increase more than 20 beats per minute. That is the orthostatic hypotension. And next cause is a pulmonary embolism, situation, uh, urination, swallowing, coughing. So while the time what will happen, our intrathoracic and then intra-abdominal pressure will increase. Thereby it will cause the reduced venous return stroke volume, reduced stroke volume, then reduced cardiac output. So those are the factors that leads to. So other medication like alcohol, cocaine, opiate analgesic, tricyclic antidepressant. So next is symptom sign is a palpitation. Palpitation in the sense, the sensation of abnormal, fast or irregular Heartbeat. So, these are the causes, anxiety, lack of sleep, caffeine and then hyperthyroidism. So, fatigue is also the, a lot of causes is there, fatigue for a majorly hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, medication like beta blockers, diuretic, antihypertensive, those are the common cause for the fatigue. So, why we are talking these are the th uh, those things means, so while taking an history, if the person complaining palpitation or fatigue or syncope means, so these are the things, the causes you should keep in your mind, then only you can uh, ask the person if the person is complaining palpitation. So you have to keep in mind, so these are the causes that will uh, contribute to the palpitation. So you have to ask the person, either you are uh, taking the regular medication, anything, either you have a history of hyperthyroidism, for that you are taking any medication. If the person is complaining fatigue means, there you have to ask the beta blocker history, uh, a previous episode of uh, hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, any antihypertensive medication. So for that idea only we are giving the, these are the things. So next is, uh, these are the common medication uh, with the person uh, have a cardiac, previous cardiac history they will take. Antiarrhythmics, uh, we know that is uh, four classes, so sodium channel blockers, second is an sodium channel blockers and then potassium channel, uh, uh, sorry, beta blockers, potassium channel blockers and then calcium channel blockers, those classes. Anticoagulants, so that prevent the coagulation, enoxaparin, clopidogrel, warfarin, heparin, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, that is the Brill category, captopril, enalapril, beta blockers, lol category, atinolol, metaprolol, lipid lowering agents like statin, satorvastatin, diuretic, prusimide, spironolactone, vasodilators, nitroglycerin, isosorbitrate, mononitrate, uh, dry, uh, dinitrate, those are the categories. Over the counter medication, herbal supplements. So here the most important thing is a vasodilator. So think if the person have a, again myocardial infection. So in myocardial infection, so the person uh, major complaint is a angina pectoris. So that uh, for angina pectoris, he immediately will give you the vasodilator of sublingual nitroglycerin 0.4 mg. That is the uh, routine dose no so without taking the history without taking the medication history you should not provide the sublingual nitroglycerin so the reason is that in the case of if the person is taking phosphodiesterase inhibitor so these are the medic uh, this is the class of medication in the case of heart failure otherwise copd um, these are the conditions the person will take the phosphodiesterase inhibitor group. So these are the potent vasodilator, potent vasodilator. So again in myocardial infection also they, we will give the nitroglycerin that is also vasodilator. So without taking the history if you are providing the nitroglycerin means already these also nitroglycerin also vasodilator mean the same thing. Uh, phosphodiesterase inhibitors, uh, inhibitors also vasodilator. If you are providing both means that will cause the more and more complication. That is why phosphodiesterase inhibitor usage is uh, if the person is taking means nitroglycerin is contraindicated. So that is the one of the important history we have to take before administering the sublingual nitroglycerin. So secondary assessment you have to take from the head to foot assessment. So here we are assessing the skin. For that, for skin, you have to assess the CTC. So you have to assess the color of the skin, you have to assess the temperature of the skin, you have to assess the condition of the skin. So color wise, red or flaccid skin, pale or white, mottled and then blue, uh, blue or jaundice. 
So motilled in the sense, pale in the sense because of the hypoperfusion that is see that will be a whitey skin appearance. So motilled in the sense that white appearance will uh, the white thing will uh, come in a patch manner, patch manner. So you can see the patch patch like a white appearance in some other region. It is because of the cutaneous ischemia. The temperature wise hot and dry temperature, hot and wet temperature, warm and dry temperature, cool and dry, cool and wet these are the things. So condition wise, so either the skin is intact or not, otherwise if they have any infection in the skin, any fungal infection or if they have any uh, abrasion, laceration, wound, anything is there or not, there we have to mention in the condition. So neck is an, uh, you have to check the trachea, either the trachea is in midline or not. For that easy assessment, so here you have a suprasternal notch. So in your suprasternal notch, you have to put your finger that in inside that pit, there you can palpate the trachea. So if it is in the midline, there you can palpate the trachea. So if it is deviated means there we won't get the trachea. So place your finger in the suprasternal notch, inside the pit, there you can palpate the trachea. So any jugular venous distension for chest waves, you have to look for the any surgical scar, nitroglycerin, uh, batch, anything is there or not, pacemaker, uh, that implanted defibrillator and then you have to palpate the crepitus tenderness and then you have to auscultate the sound, heart sound. So for heart sound, we have a five major sign, five point auscultation, first one is aortic, you have to auscultate in the right second intercostal space pulmonic left side second intercostal space, herpes point that you have to auscultate in the left side third intercostal space, then coming into the tricuspid the same fourth intercostal space left side along the sternal border, along the sternal border and then fifth intercostal uh, space uh, medial to the midclavicular line there we can auscultate the mitral valve. So abnormalities in heart sound. So heart sound mainly will produce because of the valve closer. So that is the reason for the heart sound. So S1 will auscultate in the case of closer of the atrioventricular valve that is the bicuspid and then tricuspid valve. So S2 will hear in the closer of the aortic and pulmonic valve. So where will he get the abnormalities? So loud S1 in the pulmonary hypertension, anemia, fever, hyperthyroidism, stenosed to mitral valve because the, uh, the pressure over the wall is increased. So for that there will be a loud S1 will here, decrease S1 in the sense fibrosis, calcified or obesity, embysema, cardiac tamponade. So split sound also will here. So split sound means there will be a different different sound. So if the same time both are closing means you will get a lup alone. So if it is closing one by one means you will get a split sound that will be in the Second is a S2 sound. So loud S2 in the chronic high blood pressure, pulmonary hypertension, decrease S2 in the hypotension, split sound in the bundle branch block, mainly right side bundle branch block. So auscultation wise, routinely we have to practice in the uh, normal S1, S2. Then only if you are auscultating the uh, abnormalities, then only we can easily identify. So for that, first we have to auscultate the normal sounds. So we have to well familiar with the normal sounds. So next assessment the extremities, look at the patient arm, hand, feet, uh, legs for the any swelling, swelling in the sense edema. So for edema we have to understand one concept. So edema first mainly will occur in the dependent part, dependent part means if the person is ambulatory means most dependent part, the fluid will collect it uh, first in the most dependent part. Most dependent part in ambulatory cases is the angle and then foot. So because of the gravity, the fluid will go uh, settled in the angle and the foot and then leg, then only it will follow, develops the upper region. But in the case of uh, bedridden person, so prolonged bedridden person, otherwise bedridden person, the most dependent area is in lower back and then sacral region. So if you are assessing the edema in the ambulatory cases, there you have to see the angle and foot for edema. If you are assessing in the case of uh, bedridden cases, there you have to see the lower back and then sacral region. So abdomen we have to lightly palpate uh, for any distensor or pulsation. 
bowel sound also we have to auscultate so bowel sound where we can auscultate right side uh, lower quadrant you can auscultate the bowel sounds so vital ways the five parameters again we have to take in the for enlightening the cardiac uh, cardiovascular system we have to see the four major things so here we mention pulse deficit pulse paradoxes uh, pulse pressure and then orthostatic hypotension already we mentioned so pulse deficit in the sense the difference between the epical and then peripheral pulses epical where will uh, ascultate so epical in the sense inside the in the heart so you can place your stethoscope in the fifth intercostal space you have to count the rate so think it is the 100 beats per minute like that you can take the example so peripheral pulse you have mean the same thing you have to palpate the peripheral pulse peripheral pulse then you can take the radial or brachial pulse there you have to count the rate think uh, will set as example of 75 beats per minute so there will be a variation between the epical and then peripheral pulse this is called the pulse deficit so mainly it will occur in the case of atrial fibrillation cases so you have to while the time of pulse assessment both side both extremity you have to um, Uh, palpate mean the same time. So you have to palpate the epical and then peripheral pulse also to uh, see the whether the person have a pulse deficit or not. Pulse is paradoxes in the sense the systolic blood pressure will drop more than 10 mm Hg in the inspiration. So normally our blood pressure will fluctuate uh, in the case of respiration. Means in the time of inspiration the blood pressure will fall. In the time of expiration the blood pressure will increase. This is because of the uh, intrathoracic pressure. So, but here if the uh, so we told in inspiration the blood pressure will drop, but it will be less than 10 mm Hg only. The difference will be there. so if it is more than 10 mm hg means that is the pulses paradoxes so these are the pulses paradoxes under uh, we majorly we can't perform i think we, we can't perform in the uh, pre hospital region because if you want to uh, assess in more accurately means you have to you sir you should need uh, arterial intra arterial catheterization then only you can see the difference between the inspiration and the expiration so pulse pressure in the sense that is the difference between the systolic blood pressure and then diastolic blood pressure so we will take a systolic diastolic that is somewhat about 30 to 40 is a normal 30 to 40 mm hg so if it is a more than 40 mm hg that is the late stage of shock narrow means less than 30 means that is the tachycardia and then cardiac tamponade the so final part re assessment so uh, it accompanies en route to the hospital for stable cases every 15 minutes we have to do unstable cases 5 minutes so those are the things we have to know so what are the things we have to re assess so again we have to repeat the primary survey are we breathing circulation disability exposure in primary survey part if you missed anything otherwise uh, while the time of assessment if you missed anything means you can do it again otherwise if any changes again recheck if any changes occurred in the physical examination that you have to head to for any changes occurred or not that you have to reassess third part if you did any intervention means uh, like if airway substructure otherwise in unconscious so inserted any oropharyngeal nasopharyngeal airway means you should assess the effectiveness of the that implementation so is it okay otherwise it is placed in correct uh, the person gets improved or not that you have to assess and then final part prepare the proper documentation so you have to prepare the proper documentation of the call and then you have to notify the receiving facility so these are the comes under the reassessment part so the whole thing about the cardiac assessment from next presentation onwards we'll see the uh, medical condition so do your best shalom